talk today a little bit about second liens, when to use it, what they are, what it means. Very simply, uh, whenever you do a traditional mortgage, it's going to be put in the first lien loan position, meaning that there is no other previous lien or encumbrance that title's identified. There's no tax lien. There's no other liens out there that would take precedent. And so now, because there's, it's clean, we can assess a mortgage lien against the property, meaning that in order for the, the, the seller to sell, your new buyer to sell the property, they have to pay back that first lien first, okay? So at the time of this recording, this is 2024, and the current maximum conforming loan amount is 766,550 in Bear County and surrounding areas. Why that's important is every year, the first lien loan positions change as far as the conforming loan limit, the difference between a Fannie Mae loan and a jumbo loan, okay? So there's a couple of different times and spaces when a second lien really makes sense. And I'll give you some examples. For example, maybe you have a client or maybe you have a loan that you got a couple of years ago in, in the heyday in 2020 or 2021 and your interest rate's two or 3%. And maybe you wanna access some cash for the property. Well, you certainly don't wanna refinance necessarily your 2% interest rate to get only 50,000 bucks out of your property. Instead, what you might do is get a home equity line of credit. Well, that home equity loan is accessing additional equity from the property, but it is in second lien position behind the first lien. And that way that first lien is still in place the second lien rate is higher. Why? Because there's more risk to the second lien loan. Because in the event that there was a foreclosure, God forbid, the first lien gets paid off first. What's left over might go to the second lien. Usually the second lien is what is wiped clean. In purchase transactions, there is a time and space to use a second lien. So anytime that somebody is in that jumbo range, maybe a million dollar house again, let's use the 2024 year as an example. Well, they might not have the ability to put down 20% down or 30% down or 40% down to get down the conforming loan limit. But the rates are better and the fees are better traditionally and typically when you have a conforming loan rate because it's a Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac loan. So a little bit of extra jargon in there, but super important to understand. When does mortgage insurance come into account? Things like that. So when you put down less than 20%, there's some extra risk to the mortgage company because if you did foreclose and you only put 5% down, well, oh my God, the, there's not enough money to sell the property, go through the foreclosure proceedings and get the loan paid off necessarily. So typically you put down less than 20% down, you're gonna have mortgage insurance. Well, by breaking up a loan into two loans, a first lien and a second lien, you might have what's called an 80-15-5, an 80% first lien, a 15% second lien and only 5% down, no lenders exposed more than 80% and thus there is no mortgage insurance. So it's a great way to do things. Another example of when to use that might be maybe the, the buyer plans to sell a house in the future and they're not gonna have a lot of money, but they have enough money to pay off the second lien. Well, maybe they wanna have a payment that's $3,000 a month. And if they could have put down 20% up front, it would have been 3000 bucks. But right now they only have 5% down because they haven't sold their old, old property. Well, instead we could do that 15% second lien. So of course, now maybe that, that while their other house hasn't sold, maybe they do have close to $4,000 uh, payment, but when the house is sold, they're able to wipe clean that second lien, pay it off in full. And now they're stuck with the payment that they wanted in the first place. So it's a way to bridge the gap by having that 80, 15, five or 80, 10, 10, totally 100%. In that jumbo scenario, uh, quite often, there are very limited uh, outlets for the ability to do less than 20% down, especially with certain credit ranges in the jumbo world. Uh, and so by setting it up where you have a first lien loan amount at the maximum conforming rate, uh, a loan limit at the time, so currently 766,550, you could do a 10% down above that. And, and now the, the uh, buyer is able to put down far less than what they might've been able to actually afford to bridge the gap. And so, there's a lot of multiple uses with a second lien. Those are probably the most common, something like a home equity line of credit or a, a home improvement loan, which would be a second lien in a purchase scenario, that 80-10-10 or an 80-15-5. Certainly in the jumbo world, keeping the first lien, the better rates, the easier qualifying at that conforming loan limit. And then a little bit above that would be to bridge the gap. And lastly, to, when you sell a property and you need to pay off that second lien, to get somebody back in their comfort range where their final payment might be. Those are all really good uses of those second liens. What are some last things to kind of watch out for with the second lien or things to know at least? 
like I said earlier, there is definitely higher risk to second lien lender. So the rates will be higher. And typically there's going to be some extra fees on top of what you might have done uh, for a standard first. What, why? Well, you've got two sets of attorney costs and you've got an extra title policy or uh, enough to bridge the gap. And typically second lien lenders charge 1% uh, because they know it's probably a short-term lo loan more often than not. Higher risk, higher return, higher rates, higher fees, right? So that's going to be one of the, the big ones. Another one to watch out for maybe if you're selling a property is what other liens are on the property that the buyer didn't or the seller might not have even thought was a lien like solar panels, guys, solar panels. Most people do not write a check for them. So they they go ahead and buy their $50,000 of solar panels. and They attach a second lien on the property. And if they live there forever, it wouldn't be a big deal. But if they go to sell it a year later, there's it is a big deal because the solar panels didn't make the house worth another 50,000 bucks. These are the things to kind of watch out for on the negative side, but there's absolutely a time and place to utilize a second lien. If you have questions or concerns, call me, email me, find me. I'm here to help you out. If you have other things we'd like, you'd like us to record on, please let me know. Otherwise, like or subscribe to this channel. We'll get you more information.